welcome to the firm. On the show this week, can one bench of judges modify an order passed by another bench? The Sebi Sahara battle is at the center of yet another unusual legal situation. And if you're a sale junkie, get ready to say goodbye to discounts. The Supreme Court has refused to review its decision on excise valuation. First up, this week's top story and a vexing one at that. There's been a curious turn of events in the Sebi Sahara battle. Sebi's resounding victory on August 31st seems to have suffered a setback on December 5th, just earlier this week. On August 31st, as you will recall, a bench of Justice Radha Krishnan and Justice Kehar had given the two Sahara companies time up to November 30th to refund their OFCD investors. This week, a bench headed by the Chief Justice of India, that's Altamas Kabir, gave Sahara a time extension up to February 2013 to refund the money. This week's decision may have got Sahara just three more months, but it's raised several eyebrows within the legal fraternity. The moot question, can one Supreme Court bench modify an order passed by another Supreme Court bench? Well, in order to answer that question, first I'm going to take you back in time to recount what went on since August 31st. August 31st, 2012. A Supreme Court bench of Justice Radha Krishnan and Justice Kehar ruled in favor of SEBI and ordered two Sahara Group companies to return to its OFCD investors the full outstanding amount of over 20,000 crore rupees along with 15% interest within three months. The Saharas were to pay the money to SEBI and the regulator would verify investor identities before refunding the money. The Saharas had 10 days to give SEBI all the investor documents. Sahara claims it sent a truckload of documentation to SEBI within the 10-day limit. SEBI says it did not accept the documents as they arrived on the 10th day after office hours. On October 19th, SEBI approached the Supreme Court alleging Sahara's non-compliance with the main order. The bench of Justice Radhakrishnan and Justice Kehar pointed SEBI back to its main order, which empowered the market regulator to attach Sahara's assets in case of non-compliance. On November 2nd, SEBI filed a contempt petition against Sahara, claiming it had not furnished the investor documents within the court's stipulated time. Turns out, just a day before that contempt petition was filed, SEBI had issued a letter to the two Sahara companies asking them to furnish details of all bank accounts and assets. SEBI did not explain to this show why, but I suppose they could be initial moves in case SEBI had to resort to attaching Sahara's assets. 26 days after receiving SEBI's letter and 3 days before their court-mandated refund time limit expired, the two Sahara companies approached the Securities Appellate Tribunal. Their complaint? That SEBI had deliberately refused to accept the investor documents and that it had wrongly proceeded on the basis that Sahara was in non-compliance of the Supreme Court order. Sahara's counsel, Gopal Subramaniam, told the tribunal that his client feared that SEBI would neither accept the investor documents nor the 5,120 crore rupees towards outstanding OFCDs and hence caused Sahara to violate the Supreme Court order. On November 29th, SAT dismissed Sahara's appeal, saying, the cause of action, if any, will arise if the money is tendered by the appellants as per directions of the Supreme Court and the same is not accepted by the board. The Honorable Supreme Court is seized of the matter. We see no reason how this tribunal gets jurisdiction to entertain the appeal or give any further directions in the matter. On Friday, November 30th, a day after its SAT appeal was dismissed, Sahara approached the Supreme Court to appeal that SAT decision. On Monday, December 3rd, Sahara's petition was taken up by a three-judge bench, headed by Chief Justice Altamas Kabir. That Monday did not go very well for SEBI. Counsel Arvind Dattar told this show that in Monday's hearing, SEBI submitted before the Supreme Court that any change in the payment schedule could be done only by the bench that passed the order. Further, a review petition by Sahara and a contempt petition by SEBI were also pending before that bench. But to no avail. The matter dragged on to Wednesday and finally resulted in Sahara being granted its request for a time extension. 
this even though the three judge bench acknowledged that the two sahara companies have failed on both counts since neither the amount indicated in the order together with interest at 15% per annum accrued thereon has been paid nor have the documents been submitted yet the bench gave sahara another 15 days to submit the documents and up to february 2013 to make the full repayment in three installments and so sahara has been given a 3 month reprieve but the manner in which this happened has raised like i said several eyebrows within the legal fraternity supreme court senior counsel prashant bhushan was in court during the hearings he was representing an investor who attempted but failed to intervene in the matter i asked mr bhushan for his account of what happened in court this week uh, i saw the sebi counsel raise these objections and he was asked to rudely asked to just sit down Uh, thereafter uh, even after the court proceeded to hear the arguments of the counsel for sahara the sebi counsel again got up to make his submissions he was again rudely asked to uh, sit down thereafter the chief justice proceeded to dictate the order modifying the earlier order of the of a coordinate bench of the court passed in august virtually rendering infructuous the contempt petition filed by sebi against sahara and virtually snatching uh, the case from that coordinate bench to itself when mr datar representing sebi again got up after he had uh, completed dictating the judgment to make his submissions and pointed out that he had not been heard in this matter he was rudely told by the chief justice that uh, as a senior counsel he had no business to interfere once or say anything once uh, he had already dictated the order so at no stage were the arguments of sebi heard and an order was passed virtually modifying a final judgment of another coordinate bench of the supreme court this is absolutely unheard of in the supreme court it's not only most improper it's uh, simply uh, astounding Many lawyers I spoke to said that it was unusual for one bench even if it were a three member bench headed by the chief justice to hear a matter that is closely related to a matter decided by another bench It was not only unusual but it was uh, highly improper for a coordinate bench of the Supreme Court to hear a uh, matter which seeks a modification of a final judgment passed by a coordinate bench of the supreme court i mean uh, any judgment of the supreme court even if it is by a two judge bench is a final judgment it cannot be appealed before a larger three judge bench or a five judge bench it can only be reviewed by the same bench and thereafter you can file a curative petition which goes before a constitution bench in which the original judges are also there that's according to the rules so therefore for any judge to say that we can modify a final judgment of another coordinate bench because we are a three judge, judge bench is totally uh, incorrect it is uh, 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 most improper and it makes a mockery of uh, the principle of a decision of the supreme court being final and not capable of being appealed to to a larger bench of the same supreme court but supreme court senior counsel soli sarabji disagrees let's be clear in the contempt petition which is pending before justice i think ragakrishnan and kehar the issues are different contempt is a matter between the court and the litigant this SLP with SEBI file, which Sahara file, was in respect of SAT's order. That's a different cause of action. Now that SLP can be heard by any bench, not necessarily that of <coughs> Raja Krishnan and Kehar, because even though there may be some overlapping, the question is, this is a fresh cause of action arising out of SAT's order against which uh, Sahara filed an appeal. So it does happen at times when we tell the court to look a similar matter as if it was such as a bench. Sometimes the court feels that it's no so. It's it's not a part of matter before the bench. I want to make that clear. This was a fresh cause of action 
arising after a subsequent order of set. <coughs> now the bench could have said, well, in that case go to the same bench. But it's not necessary. <coughs> the bench didn't commit any uh, illegality or I didn't uh, act unconstitutionally by saying there's a fresh matter, we'll hear it. You see, the set uh, uh, clearly said in its order that they have no jurisdiction to deal with this application of Sahara because this is an issue which has been settled by the Supreme Court and if they wanted uh, any modification of that order or any interference with that, they have to approach the Supreme Court, which meant that they had to approach the Supreme Court by way of review or by way of filing an application in the previous matter and therefore, even if they choose to file a fresh SLP against this order of SAT, the court must send it, necessarily send it to that same bench which had heard the matter. To say that this is a fresh matter arising out of a fresh SLP would mean allowing any party in future which has lost a case finally in the Supreme Court to find another way of approaching a different bench by way of filing some frivolous writ petition in the High Court and then approaching the Supreme Court by way of SLP? Please approach it clearly. Could the seizure bench have taken up the matter first place? Could it have heard the matter? Now if we could have heard the matter, it, the position doesn't change depending on the order it passed. Suppose it had dismissed, not given a day's extension, then what would have happened? It's not a question of whether it modified or not. They took all the facts before them that there's no justification for extension. Here they took the view that, well, it could be extended at a certain time. If it does nothing wrong in the bench hearing the matter, it doesn't make them wrong because of the order it passed. Because otherwise, as I told you, some would say, SEBI is forum shopping. SEBI say, no, we only want that bench, not any other bench. Why should you look at it from that point of view? about SEBI forum shopping and wanting a particular bench. But Menaka is not very clear, as I said, it's a grey area, and I think it would have been more appropriate, preferable to avoid any controversy for this bench to say, go before the same bench and say what you want to do. But if they didn't, they didn't commit any impropriety. I asked both lawyers, what happens now to SEBI's contempt petition? Can the regulators still pursue it if it so chose? In my view, they can ignore this order passed by the Chief Justice's bench because it's an order passed completely without jurisdiction. But whether they will do so or not, because if they do so, it will create an unseemly situation in the Supreme Court. Therefore, whether they will do so or not will depend upon them. But they can, in my view, they would certainly be within their rights to ignore this order of the Chief Justice's bench, which is clearly without jurisdiction. Suppose uh, Sarah doesn't adhere to the time given by the three judge bench, of course, that will be aggravation, the contempt petition will still be pending. Only thing is, instead of letters say, I don't know, September, October, they said January, February, am I correct? I don't know the details. If SEBI defaults, I'm sorry, if Sahara defaults, surely that would be an aggravated circumstance of the contempt petition. Contempt petition hasn't been uh, rendered infructuous. I would suggest that they uh, go back to the original bench and press their contempt. And if the original bench says that, no, no, now that uh, the Chief Justice's bench has passed a different order, you go there, then they should seek a review of this Chief Justice's order and thereafter file a curative petition because, as I said, it's an order passed completely without jurisdiction. Well, that sounds like a long, drawn-out legal battle, counterproductive to the main purpose of a timely refund of money. SEBI refused to comment on this story, and it's not clear what the regulator's next course of action will be. Sahara refused to comment as well, but in a press release this week has claimed that of the 27,000 crore rupees collected by the two Sahara companies via OFCDs, the current outstanding is just 2,620 crore rupees. Now, who knows what the next three months will bring. But let me close by saying this. In the past three months, we made no progress towards an investor refund. So let's hope that in the next three months, well, Sahara and SEBI are able to return to investors what is rightfully theirs. On that note, a quick break on the other side.
If you're a sale junkie, get ready to say goodbye to discounts. The Supreme Court has refused to review its decision on excise valuation.